Hey guys and welcome back. In today's video we'll be looking at how we can secure a Spring Boot application. For this we are going to use an open source identity and access management called as Keycloak and integrate this with Spring Cloud Gateway. Now for this integration we will be using OAuth 2 connect ID mechanism. With this let's get started. Okay. For this let's go to actually keycloak.org now in the getting started page here i have keycloak on docker so we're going to use the docker image to run keycloak rather than doing the installation for this actually what i have is i have a docker compose file so in this docker compose file i'm using the keycloak image and i'm binding it to port 8080 so on my local host i'll be using the port 8080 to access keycloak and I'm going to use the Keycloak username and password as admin admin. So this is the admin username that I will use to log in for the first time into Keycloak. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run Docker Compose up. And this is actually going to start the Docker container for me. So we have it. We have Keycloak running right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to localhost 8080 and as you can see keycloak has started let's go to the administrative console and put in the username and password as admin admin nice okay so we just actually got into keycloak so this is the first screen that you will get to see as a part of this you can see you have this something called as real m settings now, when you log in for the first time, you are into this master realm. So this is the place wherein you can manage your root account, as you can say. And then you could have multiple realms to handle multiple user authentication and identity management. So for this, first, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new realm called as my realm. And I'm going to create this. Here. Okay, so I just created a new realm, which is actually under the master realm. If you see in this particular section, it shows you that we have open ID endpoint configuration here. So if I open this, you see the various configuration URLs that we need in order to actually integrate this with our Spring Cloud API gateway application. We will use this a bit later, but as of now, let's look at the various things that we have. If you see in this part, you have clients, you have roles, you have users. So these are the various major blocks that I would say you would require for now. First thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a client. Now you have some default clients here, but I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to click, click here and say spring gateway application. So this is our client. It's going to use the open ID connect protocol and I'm going to say save. Okay. So once cl on clicking save, what do I get? I get some configuration settings here. So what is important right now for us is we're going to use a client protocol as open ID connect. We're going to change the access type from public to actually confidential. And then we are going to keep the standard flow on. So now what is the standard flow? So standard flow is basically the OR2 connect ID approach that we are going to use to connect using this client to our application. Okay. I don't need this direct access grant. So I'm going to turn it off. And the last thing that we need is a valid redirect URL. Now this redirect URL is the one that our application that is a Spring Boot Gateway Cloud application will actually send into the get request. And when Keycloak validates it, it makes sure that the redirect URL is the same as provided by the application. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it a value here called as a localhost 9090 login OR2 code keycloak. I'll explain this where this particular URL goes. Okay. As when we develop the particular application. So with this done, I'm going to save this configuration. Cool. Now, if you see, if I scroll up, you get this credentials tab. Now, this was now visible just because we have the access type as confidential. 
Now, if you go into the credentials tab, you see a client ID and secret. So this is the secret that we will use actually in our Spring Boot API gateway application to use this client to communicate with Keycloak. Next, so right now we created the client. Let's create a user. In this section, I'm going to create a user by saying add user and I'm just going to call it as test. You can give some particular name like your name and last name. Okay. I'm going to keep the user enabled and say save. When I said save, it actually generated an ID from me. Now remember this particular ID is a user ID that has been created for this particular test user by Keycloak. And this is something that we are going to actually be fetching inside a Spring Boot application. So along with this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the credentials tab. And in the credentials tab, I want to set a particular password because I don't want to do the entire process of registration and everything, but I'm just going to create a user and a password here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give test as the password and I'm going to shut off the temporary option here. And I'm going to say set password. Once you set this, we have now basically a user that has uh, a user ID that is test and a password that is test. Cool. So we did basically the basic stuff that is required in order to actually communicate with Keycloak using Spring Cloud Gateway. So we basically created a client with which we will actually use the client configuration inside a Spring Boot application to communicate with Keycloak. And then afterwards, when the application runs, we will actually log in using the user that we just created. So this is the most minimalistic configuration that I have done here, which will help us to actually move now to the next part that is creating the application. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to start.spring.io. So here I'm going to add some dependencies. One is the Spring Cloud API gateway. The next one is going to be the OR2 client, not the resource server, just the client. And I'm going to add the web dependency because I'm going to add an endpoint which I will protect using uh, authentication. And then I'm going to add one more that is an actuator dependency uh, whose endpoints I'm not going to be protecting using Keycloak because I want them to be available as such without any kind of authentication. So I'm going to add actuator here. So from the dependencies point of view, we just need these four dependencies. Actually, just for this demo, I'm adding these two stuff that is the web dependency and actuator just to show you some additional functionality. But in order to uh, just work with the Keycloak client, you just need these two dependencies. That is the gateway to provide the gateway features and the OR2 client to actually communicate with Keycloak. With this, let's create the group ID. And I'm going to give it a name Spring Gateway Client Application. Okay, we'll be using Java 16 here and the packaging type is going to be a jar. Okay, let's generate this project. Okay, now I have already actually created this project and have added some code. To start off, we have this particular project here. In this, let's open up this. So I have these three classes. The first class that is the Spring OR2 client application is the one that is that contains a main method to start off the Spring Boot application. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a security config. I'm going to set a security config in such a way that any pattern matching slash actuator, I'm going to permit all of them such that I don't need any kind of authorization. But any other request apart from this matcher, all the requests have to be authenticated. And the authentication needs to happen via the OR2 login page. So this configuration actually sets that when an authentication is required, please redirect it to the OR2 login page. That's, so this is the basic security config. Permit all URLs with this particular pattern. Rest all needs to be authenticated. Now, how actually these things work? So now let's go to the spring properties. Now in this property section, if you see here, 
so we have a prefix spring security over to client and then we need to set the provider now what is this provider the provider is the one in this case is cleekloak so i have created a custom name here called as my keycloak provider it can be any name because this is just a provider's name inside your application so i just gave it a custom name called as my keycloak provider now in this i'm going to set the issuer url now where did i get this issuer url remember i showed you this particular section here in the realm settings i had opened this open id uh, endpoint configuration in this configuration you would find the realm issuer url so i took this url from here and i basically provide it here in any case if you want to provide individual urls like the token uri url or the authorization url the user info url you can also do this by specifying these properties here and you can extract them from here so like you have the user info endpoint url your your token endpoint url your authorization endpoint url but for keycloak in order to extract the user attribute you would have to provide this extra value here so this is the preferred username attribute that will be fetched and put into the principal object for spring security if you don't want to do all of these minor granular configuration you just have to then specify the issuer url okay great so we just uh, uh, created the provider here now we just basically with this configuration we said hey this is the provider uh, for the o2 client and now we have to actually create the client itself right so for this we have this next section that is the registration in this registration we can actually register multiple o2 clients and now i will be actually creating just one client here called as keycloak spring gateway client and then i'm going to fill in the properties for the client that we created when we were on the keycloak screen so to go back to the keycloak admin page this is the client that we created that is spring uh, gateway application and i'm going to use this here so i'm going to use a client id as a spring gateway application i'm going to now go to the credentials tab i'm going to copy this secret and i'm going to paste it here as the client secret i'm going to keep the authorization grant type as code now remember during the client registration we had set a redirect url so this is the redirect url that we have to set here the base url actually refers to the application's base that is localhost the port number slash the rest of the stuff so we have login or to code keycloak which is the same url that we provided in our settings here so login or to code keycloak okay so this has to match otherwise it will not actually allow us to get the authorization code once the user actually logs in so this is like a security mechanism to make sure the authorization goes exactly to the application which actually requests it and doesn't go to some arbitrary third party url or something okay this client configuration that we just created refers to the provider so then we have to provide this provider name here which is the same as the provider id that we gave, gave here so with this we actually right now did all the configuration that is actually required to actually create the o2 client which actually communicates with keycloak okay this is done from the o2 client point of view right let's look at a controller in the controller i have a simple get mapping here it's a slash mapping that is just when we hit local host and the port slash it will try to access this particular endpoint now when it tries to access this particular endpoint what we want to do is we want to get the principal object what is this principal object so when spring security authenticates a user it creates this principal object this would have various information like you could have the name of the particular principal and you could also embed some extra information that you want okay so we want this principal object to be returned once a user has been authenticated and will return the name 
Now in this case, the name is actually the ID of the user. So if you go back, the users here and say view users and go here. This is the ID that will be returned as a part of this get call here. So right now with this, we have actually set up key cloak from scratch. We started key cloak, we did the client, um, we created a client, we created a user, and then we use the client configuration in our properties file here. We actually did the security config such that actuator URLs are allowed, but any other URLs would be blocked and they have to be authenticated. And this, and for the authentication part, it would be redirected to the login or to login page. And then only the resource will be used. Cool, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off this application. Now, before I start off, as we know, Spring uh, by default starts at 8080, but our key cloak is also running at 8080, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more configuration here. I'm going to allow the uh, this application to run on 9090, just so that the ports don't clash. And also I'm going to add management endpoints here. So this is the actuator management endpoints, which will actually expose everything basically. Now with this, I'm going to start the application. So let's go here. Cool. So the application is now started. Let's go to the browser and access localhost 9090. It gave me an error client not found. Let's see what went wrong. So if I go back to my properties file, the client ID is Spring Gateway Client, but I think my client ID here was, oh, it's Spring Gateway Application. Okay, so let's change this and restart the application. Let's try accessing the resource again. Okay, so now we have reached to the login screen. So I'm going to add the username test and the password as test and let's sign in. Wow, that's nice. So what we got as a response here is the ID. Now, what is this ID actually? Remember when we created the particular user in Keycloak, we got an ID that was generated by Keycloak, right? So if I go to this test user, this ID that was generated by Keycloak is actually now being read by our Spring Boot application and it has been returned as a response. Why? Because in our controller, the principal object that we got, its ID has been set as the name. Now you can actually customize this further to actually return the actual name as the first name and the last name and then after join it to get the name itself. For this, you would have to add a particular JWT converter over here, such that from the claims, it can actually get the particular username. Then after us give you the principal object with the username inside it. I have linked this particular repository in the description below. If you want, you can actually refer to the code directly and use it to integrate with Keycloak. So with this, we integrated Keycloak with a Spring Boot API gateway application. And when the user tried to access the root URL, he was redirected to the login page wherein he entered his credentials and then he could access the root URL. Now in my next video, I'll be integrating a separate resource server and then protect the resources using key cloak roles. So make sure you subscribe to this particular channel to know once it's out. If you have any kind of questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Till then, take care and see you in my next one.